Hi, Sarah. Hey, Louise. How are you? I'm doing well. How are I you? saw you. I know. It was so <laughs> great. I miss you already. I miss you. I woke up this morning sad, you know, that you weren't here. <laughs> and I love that um, we're sitting here and I know exactly where you're sitting. I know. Next is and my visit to you. Gracie's right down there. And you've got Sam, your dog, the dog, visiting dog. Yes. Who yes. misses you? And misses- he misses my ankles. Yes. He misses my ankles. <laughs> He was really in love with you. He hasn't done that to me at all. (laughs) And Gracie too. They loved you. Well, of course they did. You know, Mm. they know, they know a fellow dog lover. Well, we're, as you just said, we are reading no more secrets. Chapter 17 here of American baby, Gabrielle Glazer. And just one of the best, but, oh, um, don't forget. We are the frequency of which I don't know, but we are going to highlight. Um, and so therefore you can reach out to us if you have any kind of adoptee activist stuff, mm-hmm. adoptee gathering, any kind of thing in your area. And you want us to, to tell people about it, please get in touch with us. And we will talk about it on the podcast today. We have somebody in Louise's area. Yep. So we are promoting here a C-A-A-R car. It's an adoptee centric alliance. They're working very hard to stop an unfair and dirty bill coming up in the California legislature. It's AB1302. And it's important to know that. And it has been written by a non-adoptee state representative, of course. It strips the autonomy by allowing birth parents to deny access if they choose to look. So currently California requires a compelling reason um, that you have to give a judge to obtain your original birth certificate. This is actually proposed to, you know, to be a benefit to adoptees, but it's the exact opposite. It's like framed as one thing and it's, and it's another. So there's a Facebook group called CAA, uh, C-A-A-R, CAR, And so if you join it, it's all California adoptees can get their birth records and they're fighting to keep getting their birth records, open up things. So interesting though, that, that because of the chapter that we're reading, yes, um, it's a skip ahead, but most, uh, birth parent mothers don't, don't object to, it's a small percentage of birth mothers that later in life when adoptees come seeking that don't want their information given very, very small, not yeah. enough to, to have a, you know, nationwide law that would restrict no. us from knowing our, and this is happening in California. It's like, Oh, the birth parents want to be protected. No, this is a very veiled thing. Yes. You know, and so adoptees need to get behind this in California. If you're a Californian and if, and if you're not a Californian join and help out, cause we need to help out everybody in each state. Yeah. So diving right into no more secrets, Mm -hmm. right on that first paragraph, I loved that she, I'm just going to read this first paragraph. This book chronicles two journeys, a lifelong separation and a bittersweet reunion. The experiences of Margaret and David were part of a hidden chapter of U.S. history, a reproductive and civil rights story Mm. that remains unresolved for millions of Americans. If there is a basic human right to know your parents or the fate of your sons and daughters, then a significant number of our fellow citizens have been deprived of something as fundamental as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The United States had little understanding of possible long-term consequences when it launched a social experiment Uh in which millions of babies were raised by families with whom they shared no genetic bond and who knew little or nothing of their inheritance. Yep. That is a social experiment, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We were part of a social experiment. We were a social experiment. I mean, the words hit home. It's... Mm -hmm. It's so big how she wraps this up. I mean, the whole point is knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, then it says, you know, genealogy is one of America's favorite pastimes, both in real life as a hobby. It's second only to gardening and (laughs) online. (laughs) Which made me laugh because, you know, I'm sitting here at night doing the ancestry thing and talking to you and we have all these things and my husband does the gardening. So... (laughs) I had no idea it was that. That's the thing. If 
just you saying that right there. Okay. All these people are so interested. And this isn't adoptees we're talking about. Just the nation is doing their ancestry and genealogy at night. But yet we shouldn't know our history. We shouldn't ask questions. You yeah, know, because we're infantilized. <laughs> Talk about this yep. this chapter, uh di- you know, it this book was focused on the baby scoop era. Yeah. Uh, but really this now, this chapter brings us up to to speed. But, Yep. Things, you know, now there's other layers of surrogacy and, yeah, and all that stuff. And then the, now those, those babies that were from sperm, sperm donors or egg donors are now older and going, well, you know, what about well, who me? am I? That's yeah. right. They and, also have the right to know their genetic footprint and they were a social experiment of another kind. And, uh, but they were also lied to. Yes, um, they were. You know, there was one doctor who in, who used his own sperm oh. um, and lied about it. I mean, so there again secrets and lies. But what I found the the most striking thing about this chapter was how unregulated mm. it still is. And they, you know, they talked about um, if you substituted the word kidney for baby, our our <laughs> society would never stand for it. We'd never tolerate the idea that if you have enough money, you could buy the perfect kidney from a living donor or that a kidney from a black person would be, would be cheaper or that if you paid the most expenses up front, you could get a kidney faster than wealthy competitors. Congress would be up all that in 10 minutes. Is that just taking the one word and switching it? Everybody mm-hmm. would be in an uproar on both sides of the aisle. Everybody would be like, you can't, that's horrible. Well, hi, this is called human trafficking. <laughs> yeah. While the happening. methods in placing children with adoptive parents may have shifted since the post-war years, one thing remains constant. The process is largely unregulated. Isn't it? It's nothing's changed in that way. No. It's probably, I have a feeling maybe even gotten worse in some ways you know, what's except movement. now, you know, like, like there, there are grassroots movements, yes. there are podcasts, there's yes. TikTok, there are adoptees our voices. and adoptee advocates and, yeah. and, and adoptive parents who are, who are, you know, realizing the, yeah all they, the harm and adoptive parents that have also been lied to in mm-hmm. want of a family. Yes. In pursuit of the American dream. I like this part. She says, as for the future of adoption, it's likely to remain part of society as long as there are unwanted pregnancies and people unable to raise their baby or children in a safe environment. Modern adoption with its openness and efforts to recognize the cultural needs of adoptees is preferable to the poorly funded and regulated foster care arrangements in many states, but there are instances in which people feel ill-equipped and sometimes have to give up a child. However, International adoption has increased scrutiny for its abuses. Thank God, you know, that's happened. I'll skip ahead a little, but it's almost never guaranteed that adoption will provide a child with a better life. Most often it's just a different life. Mm -hmm. I really circled that because it's still the narrative that it's going to be better. And it's just not necessarily better. It's different and most often not better. So you know, well, what I, what I really, uh, and again, people highly recommend the book. If you're yes. not reading it, do, um, but that the rights of adoptees have emerged as a global political issue, mm-hmm. closed secretive adoption practices like those in the United States were widespread in post-World War II, Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Ireland authorities also orchestrated the coerced adoption of babies born to hundreds of thousands of single mothers, as in the United States, officials in Canada and Australia also forcibly took children from indigenous communities and gave them to white families. So finally, Australia apologized. And there's this whole 2013, 2013, when the prime minister, Julia Gillard gave a speech, um, and really with profound sadness and remorse, mm-hmm. we offer you all our, you know, there's, you can read it, but this is the, this is, it. this is the end of the book. And it gives, it gives me chills. Me Such words would offer great comfort to Margaret and millions of other mothers, adoptees, fathers, sisters, and brothers trapped in the closed American system. They are still waiting. They are still waiting. No apologies have, and are, since for, have two, been forthcoming. The, and since 2013, we've seen other countries 
Mm-hmm. Give apologies. Not yet here. Nope. Well, because it's the fit again. Yeah. We talked about in the book. It's it's the one thing that crosses the political yep, that's divide. Right. That adoption is a wonderful thing, and you cannot argue that. No. In their minds, so. What a we do have some exciting news. Yes, though. we do. Next week uh, is a very special finale, and we're gonna maybe we're gonna just surprise you with it. It's so just I'm not gonna tell you. Well, we'll be scary. promoting it. So, well, who yeah. am I? What am I saying? <laughs> we're having Gabrielle Glazer and Margaret Katz from the book. Um, Margaret is coming on. Margaret I, is coming on. I can't believe it. She's like she's almost like. You a know, mythical like, figure yes, in a way. Yes, a mythical figure to you <laughs> and I. We talk about her all the time. Like, and I thought about her just the other day. I was saying, I need to be strong. She, that woman is strong, you know, yes. and keep going with things. And Gabrielle Glazer, the work that she's uh, done. The work that adopting. she's done and is doing. Yeah. It's just. I can't okay. Wait. Well, we'll, we'll see you in a minute. Shout out to Jeff Forney. See you in a minute. <laughs> see you in a minute. <laughs> okay. Bye.